Next in the den. Yes, the last drink. <laughs> Product designers and camping enthusiasts, Jonathan Harris and Jonathan Schofield. I was a Cub Scout. My dad was in the army, so I've had it throughout my uh, upbringing. And to actually create a product from scratch uh, in this marketplace is, is fantastic. They certainly know which dragon they want and why they want her. Well, I think Deborah Meadham would be a really exciting uh, dragon to have on board for us, um, obviously with her knowledge of the camping and uh, recreational vehicle market. We feel that would be a brilliant opportunity and probably could bring other uh, angles to the project as well. Hello, dragons. My name's Jonathan Harrison. This is the Opus Camper, the world's most exciting mobile glamping product. We are looking for uh, an £80,000 investment for 5% in this startup company. My name is Jonathan Schofield, and I'd like to take you through the features and benefits of the Opus Camper. So, the Opus Camper is a fully braked trailer. It's designed to take boats, bikes, um, kayaks, and even a motorbike. And it's designed when you actually get to your end destination, you can remove all your outdoor adventure toys. Then the Opus trailer becomes the Opus Camper. Inside, you'll find it's got two king-size beds at either end. It's got running water, it's got heating, it's got gas and electric cooking, it's got a refrigerator in there as well, and even a toilet. Uh, we would really like to have investment from a high-profile dragon, raise the brand awareness, um, and really, hopefully, turn our dreams of, of selling 500 units a reality within the coming years and we'd really like to invite ye dragons to come up and have a look inside. Part caravan, part trailer, and part tent. It's a wholly original offering from Jonathan Harrison and Jonathan Schofield. Oh, gosh. That's actually amazing. <laughs> That's bigger than I thought. They're seeking £80,000 in return for a 5% stake in wow. their new camper company. <laughs> It that? looks yes, no, like all of, all of it, it. this would take me a week to turn into a I don't tent think, I don't from think, the trailer. I, I think you'd have to assemble this. But a quick look around the product has left Sarah Willingham reaching for the instruction manual. How long does that take to change that into that? Chance. And how many people does it take? It can be done by one person, because the process is only opening both the panels like that, so it opens a bit like a silver cross pram. And then you wind the corner legs down either side and the bed supports and then you're inside. Um, so it takes about 20, 20 minutes. So, so a numpty like me could put that up for in, in 20 minutes? Yeah. Even the inside? So yeah, I mean, it's all very, I mean, it's very easy, you're just lifting things into position. It's not sort of a jigsaw type of puzzle. Wow, and all the top and everything? Yeah, that's all fixed into position, yeah. I don't think I've ever been into a tent or a caravan without hitting my head. We did have you in mind with this. No, it's the first time I've ever walked in and thought, wow, I don't have to duck. Big thing for me was the toilet inside. Because if you pit imagine at night and you want to go up for a number two and you've got a full house, <laughs> it's going to be quite embarrassing. <laughs> so how? How can you sort of deal with that? Because that's the only thing that's kind of putting me off. There's an awning, which is like an, an extra tent, which can go on the front, which kind of gives you like a lobby area. And to, to the side of that, you can have a little pod, which is a closed off area, and you could put the toilet there. I can't believe you actually go to the toilet, Peter. I had absolutely no idea. Well, it doesn't smell, my <laughs> poo. <laughs> <laughs> Despite Peter Jones's attempt to poo-poo their product, the entrepreneurs are still smelling of roses. But it is established leisure industry player Deborah Meaden who the pair are really looking to impress. So, um, what's the what's the closest equivalent that you have on this at the moment? Because I have seen some trailers with pop-up 
top. A lot of these things are um, things from the 70s and 80s, and some of the ones you probably see out there now are probably ones which are still being used. So we wanted to give it a really modern feel and think, well, what can we change about it? And what we've done, which is different, is we've kind of put the curves in it and raise the ceiling, you know, to give you the advantage of being canvas. And what's the market doing? I mean, where have you, where have you shown? You must have been to the caravan show. What happened? We kind of find that if someone's except a caravan, they're probably not going to have this product. So it's kind of tends to be people who go, actually, I would never be in the market for a caravan. Yeah, I'd have a VW camper, yeah. that's kind of cool. But a VW camper, which is going to cost 40 to 50,000 pounds, and this being kind of the the £12,000 mark is much more affordable. The camping and caravanning entrepreneurs and their dragon of choice appear to be speaking the same language. And Sarah Willingham is curious about the individuals behind the innovation. What, what made you do this? Are you just good campers or have you been in the industry? We've been in the industry uh, making accessories for the caravan market since uh, uh, 2002. Purple Line is the, is the uh, foundation company. Jonathan's got that business. Tell us about the existing business. What does that turn over? What does it, how's it going? Um, the latest accounts, uh, we did a three, uh, I think it was 3.4 million turnover, uh, made a profit of um, just shy of 500,000, and it's a wholesale business. So we're looking to hive off this retail um, business of the Opus Camper. Why don't you just keep it in the existing business? 80 grand for 5% all in? <laughs> uh, <laughs> you might, for, you for might have five camper, very yeah. interested dragons <laughs> on that basis. <laughs> for the, Opus, the Opus Camper, that's what we're, we're presenting to you today. I'm not looking for investment into uh, the Purple Line business. It's bad news for the deal-hungry dragons as Jonathan places his existing business out of bounds. And the relationship between the old and new parts of his empire is puzzling to Suleiman. I have a bit of manufacturing background. Oh, are we saying that Purple Line going forward will manufacture them and Opus will buy them Purple Line or will Opus be a manu... Manufacturer, I don't quite get it. No, I think Opus will be the manufacturer. This is the, the, the business model we're doing with uh, Australia and America as well. I've got a sister company, one in Australia and one in California. They tap into uh, our CAD engineering expertise, uh, our marketing, graphic design. They're smaller operations and that's working well. Can I just clarify, you've got a business doing this in Australia and America, so, th so we can only really be in the UK? Yes. So this is effectively sort of a UK distributorship of an idea. Without any... That's it, isn't it? UK distributor. Uh, that's effectively it, because if we're not allowed yeah. to sell these things in Australia and yeah. America, where there is a big market, because you're mm. already doing that, mm. you're, you're, you're giving us a chance, thank you very much, yeah. to be a salesman in your, in your distributorship in the UK. Well, look, I mean, one of the reasons I came onto this show, I quite enjoy working with people who have had an idea and they want to make it come to reality and they need a bit of help to, to, to come along with that, and you can see their dreams come true. But I didn't come on the show to become a salesman for someone's minor subsidiary. I'm out. With only a slice of the domestic camper market up for grabs, a disgruntled Nick Jenkins has turned down the deal. Will Sarah Willingham prove any more open to investing on those terms? I personally find it very difficult to get very excited and work very hard on the UK market, knowing you're opening up lots of other doors of which I would never be part of. But I really like it and I can completely see who your market is. I'd like to make you an offer. I'd like to offer you all of the money for 10% of your existing business, but as soon as we hit 200 units, you can buy back half of my shareholding, taking me down to 5% at the same price as I invest in today. Sarah Willingham is first to test the water. She's offered the full £80,000, 
but in return, she wants a slice of Jonathan's lucrative camping accessory company. With the poker-faced entrepreneur giving nothing away, it's time for Peter Jones to chance his hand. I'm, I was sitting here really excited about the opportunity, and it's kind of... it's falling apart, really, because whilst the product is amazing, everything filters back to Purple Line. It's a bit like you're the honeypot. I just don't want to be the one that's stung. So, Jonathan, I'm going to give you an issue to think about. I'm going to make you an offer. I'm going to offer you all of the money, but I want 10% of Purple Line. Two dragons are now in, but only on condition that Jonathan folds his existing business into the deal. Will clothing magnate Tuka Suleiman follow suit? OK, so, guys, I'm going to make you an offer. I will give you all of the money for 10% of Purple Line or all of the money for 25% of Opus. A dual offer for the pair to consider. Tuka Suleiman's willingness to invest in just a camper business putting him in pole position to snap up the deal. But one dragon is still to play, and with her background in the camping and caravanning industry, she could hold all the cards. I, you have made it very difficult because, um, actually, uh, when you talked about the global reach, that was the bit that started getting quite exciting, and I thought, actually, it's the UK and Europe, and that's quite different. But I do like it. So I'm going to make you an offer for all of the money, but I want 25% of the business. And I'm being clear, it's about the Opus business. Um... So for the two entrepreneurs, a difficult decision. You. I like Deborah's on. Deborah's going to bring the most to the party. Or, with their preferred dragon confining her offer to their new business, perhaps for once it's a straightforward one. That was a bit too quick. Was it? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, no disrespect to any of you guys, but there was obviously one dragon we kind of felt would be really good for the business. Well, just before you say oh. that, can I make you another offer then? Because <laughs> you're clearly going for Deborah. <laughs> I mean, it's really, really hacks me off. <laughs> and it's not right. What do you mean it's not right? <laughs> Spot on. <laughs> I would be willing to halve my purple line 10% with Deborah so that I would own 5%. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Um, yeah, thank you, all, all dragons. Um, you know, prior to coming in, we, we were definitely hoping to court one particular dragon. Um, we would love to go ahead and, and work alongside you, Deborah. That's a Great nice show. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Well, how much fun, eh? It's going to be festivals. Yeah, so I'm going to spend my summer doing festivals. <laughs> Marvellous. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you very much. So two very happy campers leave the den. When the trap door. Having succeeded in securing the dragon investor of their choice. Not to mention a substantial £80,000 cash injection. It's the turbo charge that we really wanted for the business to really take us to the next level. Well, the way I look at it, I didn't lose. I didn't want that deal anyway. I did. <laughs> <laughs> Not smarting well, at well all, Well done, Peter. Deborah. Not, Not well done. To um, team up with Deborah is, is fantastic news for us and yeah. uh, will really give uh, all the team uh, great encouragement moving forward.